everyone. So I am here with a follow-up video to our fuselage kit delivery. If you haven't seen that, I'm going to put a link above and down in the description. Um, yeah, it was bad. Needless to say, I mean, like, it was just not good. So, wanted to give you guys an update on where it stands. As you saw in the last video, the crate came out pretty much demolished. Um, yeah. And the delivery guy tried to tell us that we couldn't refuse delivery. And yeah. So I'm going to pick up where we left off. After he left, we had the crate sitting there in the front of our garage. And we said, okay, look, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and call Vans. So there's a number and a name on the bill of laden and it says, if there's a problem, call Vans Aircraft and call here. And there's Barb. And I called Barb right away. She picked up, um, explained the situation to her, told her what happened and asked if I could send her a picture to show her just exactly how bad the damage was. And I did and I emailed it to her and she was just appalled at the damage. So, um, the really nice thing though, is that one of the things she said to me when we were talking is she's like, don't worry, we're gonna make you whole again. And that really meant a lot right off the bat because it could have just been something where they said, well, when we shipped it, it was fine. And you know, it's between you and the shipper because they ruined it. But it was really nice that, you know, she recognized like this was really messed up. This was not just like um, a little bit of damage to a crate and a, perhaps a small little claim that you might have to do to get one or two little parts replaced. I mean, this is, this was, you know, like the whole crate was destroyed and yeah. So it meant a lot though, to hear that from, to hear that from Vans and hear that from Barb and that that was the stance that they were taking and to try and really help fix the situation instead of just, um, being really hands off. It was really nice and it really, right off the bat made me feel much more comfortable. So she went out and she reached out to their rep over with ABF. And um, I was going back and forth on the phone and email with Barb. And um, the nice thing is they gave us two options. So she said, you have a choice between you can keep it there, you can open it, you can inspect it, they can have their inspector come out and evaluate the damage, and then you can handle the claim directly through ABF or you can keep it there, don't open it. Um, we'll contact ABF and tell them you're gonna refuse delivery and then they pick it up and they take it back to Vans and then Vans would handle the claim with ABF because then Vans would be inspecting all the damage and looking at it and, um, and getting with their insurance inspector for the third party insurance inspector for ABF to get the claim going. And so we opted for the second one because again, it's like some of this stuff, like we've never worked with fiberglass before. I don't know what I'm looking for to see if there's damage to that cabin cover. Um, and it just seemed like a, a better option because there was so much, it was the entire fuselage kit. I don't know if, if we'd be able to necessarily tell if everything was damaged or not. And it just made us feel a lot more, a lot more comfortable knowing that Vance was going to be one looking at everything. And, and also it took a lot of stress off of us to not have to be worried about doing the, the claim for this huge expensive kit all by ourselves. So that, that really meant a lot. And so we went ahead and told them that we were gonna go for that option and just really appreciated the timely manner in which uh, Barb was able to get a lot of this rolling for us. And again, how, uh, how much Vans really wanted to stress that they were gonna help make sure to fix everything. ABF. Not really happy with them. It got a little better at the end, but I mean, it started off bad one with the damage and the delivery um, and the driver trying to tell us we couldn't refuse delivery. That, and especially finding out, I did tell that to Barbara and she told me that that's totally wrong, that, that he should not have said that. Um, and so we were already just kind of off on the wrong foot I had heard originally from um, the rep at ABF who Barb was talking with and the message that was conveyed to Barb that was conveyed to me was that uh, ABF was going to be sending somebody out to pick it up after she had told them that we were choosing to go for the option to have the 
um, have everything take place between bands and ABF and to just return it and, and have it refu delivery refused and go for it that way. And so I was told that I would be getting a call from this lady who was the rep at ABF to coordinate a pickup time. And instead of getting a call from them, I get a call from another woman who says that she is from a third party uh, inspector who has been hired by ABF to come out and evaluate the damage. And so again, nothing, nothing was said to me about this. I was unaware. Um, I went ahead and scheduled an appointment with her. I told her I was gonna be confirming everything just to make sure that we were all on the same page. And I said, how soon can you come out? This was again, Wednesday morning, early afternoon after everything transpired. And uh, she said, well, the soonest that she can come out would be on Monday. So five days later. And I said, you know, is there, that's a really long time. Is there no way that you can come out any sooner so this can get returned so we can get this whole process going? And she said that it had not been marked expedited in the request that came from ABF. So no, she couldn't change anything and get it out there earlier. And so that right off the bat, hearing that, um, that it wasn't marked as some sort of expedited case was really frustrating and upsetting because this isn't, again, this wasn't this little bit of damage. This wasn't a small box. This wasn't an inexpensive item. We're talking about the entire fuselage kit, which is what, $17,000, $18,000, somewhere around there. And, and it was hugely damaged. And at this point I had already sent pictures and everything. They, they'd seen the pictures, they'd seen the damage. And so that was, it was really frustrating to, to hear that. And it wasn't until I sent out the following morning a pretty mm, sternly worded email to indicate my incredible displeasure and frustration at the situation and the way this entire process was getting handled and to hear that it wasn't going to be expedited and that I still didn't even have a pickup date scheduled. All I knew is that they were planning to come out after that and pointed out that this really needed to be expedited and this needed to be handled uh, much sooner than that. So at that point, things started to change. They, the woman at ABF did agree that yes, it needed to be expedited. She changed it. I got another call from the lady saying, oh, well, it's expedited now. I can be there tomorrow morning. So she can, uh, this point was scheduled for this morning, first thing to come out and do the inspection. In the, woman at ABF who I'd been working with with uh, Barb had said that yes she was going to make sure to try and get a pickup scheduled for Friday afternoon today after the inspection was over and so she started at 10 45 in the morning yesterday trying to get this appointment booked to have it picked up we already knew by that point 10 45 a.m yesterday that we were going to have the inspection done by the third party um, adjuster on today at 8 a.m this morning so we knew that it needed to be after 9 a.m. that we had to pick up. And long story short, several people were emailed at ABF. There was a long email chain that went back and forth. And basically each person just seemed to keep adding a new person saying, hey, get in touch with her and schedule this. Hey, get in touch with her and schedule this. Hey, get in touch with her and schedule this. But nobody actually scheduled anything. And so throughout the day I'm emailing going, I haven't heard anything, I haven't heard anything, I haven't heard anything, I still don't have an appointment. And it wasn't until I finally found in one of the emails that had gone out from somebody else saying, uh, somebody contact her, that I found a cell phone number for the gentleman I think is one of the managers there at the local depot. And I called him and I left a message. I'm like, it's now, I think at that point it was like six o'clock and I said, no one's contacted me. I still don't have an appointment scheduled. The lady is booked to come out. This is, you know, a very expensive item. This is a substantial amount of damage. This is an expedited claim. You know, why has nobody contacted me to get the pickup scheduled? To his credit, the gentleman who I called, he did call me back that evening and I was really pleased with that. I know it was after hours and he was at home, but I did really appreciate that he took the time to reach out and try and fix the situation. He did apologize that nothing had been scheduled. He said that he would be getting uh, everything worked out with dispatch the next morning and that he would be in touch with me to make sure that they would come in the early afternoon after the, um, the inspection was over. So, at least once I got a hold of him, things went a lot better. Having somebody who now was communicating with me and accountable and responsive really helped improve the situation. The 
One thing that did make it tricky for him trying to schedule it though, is that uh, I don't know if you heard in the original video when it was dropped off, but there was so much damage to the crate that the delivery driver, when he dropped it off, said, if somebody comes back out here to pick this up, you need to tell them to send a flatbed because he's like, I don't think there's any way they're gonna get this back onto a box truck using the lift gate and a pallet lifter. So he's like, you need to tell them that they're gonna have to come out here with a forklift and a flatbed. So I'm talking to the, the gentleman now whose cell phone number I have and who I've been communicating with and I explained this to him and again, long story short, the problem was they had to end up sending out two different trucks to get this loaded because they, while the, he did agree from looking at the different pictures of the damage and everything that I sent him, that they would probably need to have a forklift to make sure to get it picked up and into um, a truck that they would not be able to secure it to a flatbed because if it was on a flatbed, they'd have to tie it down to secure it for transportation. And I, I explained to him when he was asking about this, that there was substantial damage to the top, that one whole side of it had been completely damaged and that I did not think that this was something that was gonna be able to be safely secured if they uh, tried to put straps on it to secure it, that they were probably more than likely gonna cause additional damage. So because of that, they ended up having to send out a flatbed with the forklift to pick it up. And then they had a box truck that then they loaded it into. And so he was trying to coordinate two different trucks to come out to handle this situation. So, um, but he, he was really nice. Again, he was, uh, got back and forth with me really nicely this morning. And again, um, last night when I finally got a hold of him. So that at least went much more smoothly but i did convey to him i said i was really frustrated because the bottom line is some major damage happened to this crate and this isn't something where a little bit of damage happened and nobody knew whoever was around when this happened they knew they knew this i mean this was not like a little bit of damage this was not an oopsie we happened to back into it and there's a teeny little puncture mark or whatever this is a huge amount of damage that was done and I'm like, nobody contacted me when the damage was done. Nobody contacted me when it arrived at a local depot asking, what do we want to do? Um, the delivery driver still brought it out and tried to deliver it to us. And on top of that, then tried to tell me I couldn't refuse delivery. Um, it just seemed so bizarre to me that like, given the amount of damage and I mean, again, the fact that one whole side panel there, the one where it's got that huge hole in it, if you look, and I'll, I'll tr put some pictures up, but like 90% of that whole side panel, it completely, it broke there at like the 90% mark. And that whole panel at some point came completely off and it's being secured only by this like one, maybe two metal bands that were holding it in place. That's it. So I'm like, when you're missing one of the largest sides to this entire crate, and there's a huge uh, cave in there where something clearly collapsed the top of the crate because of how heavy it was, and, and I don't know if it was dropped on it or what, um, but with given that amount of damage, it's like, why didn't anybody do anything before now? Like, why did it really take coming and bringing it here to my house to and to the be like what the heck are you serious like you're gonna deliver this to me like this it, it i don't know maybe it's just me it just seems like some common sense should have kicked in i don't know if that's just policy he said that normally they try to fix you know any type of damage and still get it delivered to the person and then handle some sort of a claim and i would understand that under most circumstances again where you're talking about small minor damage a minor puncture um to a box or a crate something along those lines. But when you're talking about this kind of damage, I was just, maybe it's just me. I don't know. You can tell me if I'm crazy or not, but I just, I really feel like this is something where someone should have stepped in and gone like, whoa, okay, this is clearly going to be a claim. There's clearly a problem that happened here. What do we need to do to start fixing this before taking it and bringing it over here to my house and, and having to figure it out? Anyway, got everything scheduled, figured out how they're going to do it and told me that it was going to be here after the lady came the next part here where i get frustrated is that um we saw the box truck had arrived they were still waiting for the flatbed it had to come so they couldn't do anything with it because they had to wait for the flatbed to arrive with the forklift 
and you know we've got one of the the doorbells with the camera and everything on it and i get a little notice that hey there's motion at your door and i had gone out there when we saw the first truck had arrived i brought out the tripod with the camera because i was going to film everything to make sure this was no longer about you know filming something for the channel this was about documenting it for any sort of a claim you know i wanted to make sure that i documented what happened when they came to pick it up and went to load it in the truck in case any subsequent damage occurred that there was no question about, well, what happened or did we do it? It's like, because we haven't touched it since it was out there. Um, and I come out and find out that they're already there trying to put it on the forklift. And I asked them, I was like, nobody thought that you should ring the doorbell and tell me that you're here and tell me that you're loading this up. Oh, well, I was told we, we don't need a signature for this. So we were just going to pick it up and take it away. Really? Like... You're on my property. You're 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 just gonna sneak in here and sneak out and not tell me that you're even here. That just if nothing else, it sure comes across the wrong way. It doesn't make it look like it's anything very you know. It comes across rather untoward and looking like it's a little bit sketchy. So I don't know. That just really upset me there. I happened to come out before they'd actually gotten everything picked up and put onto the forklift. So I, I already had the camera set up, I turned it on and I'm really glad that I did because it ended up that when he went to lift it on the forklift, that part of that broken, that huge broken side where the hole was, part of it just completely broke off, just snapped off. And so now there was an even bigger hole there um, from where that, I don't know, I think it was probably at least about like a foot wide, the part that broke off. So, um, just again, glad to have it documented so there, there's no question of, oh, well, I don't want this to be something. Well, they ripped it off. I didn't rip it off. No, this happened when you were moving it. <sighs> so I'm just glad it's all there on video. Filmed it all the way up until the moment when they got it into the back of the box truck, dropped the, the back and locked it. And so now it's gone. They, they did come pick it up. They put it on the box truck. It is on its way to the depot. Apparently they're gonna to have to evaluate to see if it's in a sturdy enough condition that they can go ahead and transport it back to vans. And then at some point, whether it's in the current condition or they have to repackage it somehow, it's getting back to vans. And then that's gonna be um, handled there with, with vans and with, um, uh, with ABF. So that's where we stand right now. Very happy again with the response from Vans. Really happy that they recognized how terrible the situation was and they're trying to help help us and fix it. And again, how quickly they have responded anytime I've had a call or email. Um, Barb over there, she's been great. ABF, really not that happy. Um, again, the lack of communication when the damage happened, having to complain in order to get this escalated, which I really find preposterous. Um, to the point where you, you know, you're actually handling it in a much more timely manner given the nature of the damage and the amount of damage and the value of the item. And, and again, the lack of communication just to get an appointment scheduled for the pickup. Like an entire day of just people either not responding or forwarding the email to somebody else and never hearing back from anybody. So that was just really disappointing. Again, when the gentleman finally, when I finally got a hold of the one gentleman with his cell phone, um, who I think again is the manager of the local depot, he was very nice. He was really helpful. He was very friendly and very apologetic. But uh, and then to have it though, where they come up and they just try and sneak away with it without saying anything, without ringing the doorbell, without telling me they're there. I mean, come on, like this is just you're making it worse. So <sighs> anyway. A couple things I wanted to make sure to address after um, going through the different comments, which by the way, thank you so much for all of the really kind comments and concern and everything. You guys reached out through, um, through my website, through Instagram, through YouTube, and I just want you to know it really meant a lot to us to, to read all the different comments and see the concern and everything. Um, thank you so much for that. That was really kind of you. Couple things to address though from the comments. The first thing I want to say is that like this is not normal. I had no problems with our empanage kit getting delivered, with our wing kit getting delivered. Our empanage kit was delivered by Old Dominion. Our wing kit was delivered by ABF, and we had no problems. We did not have damage. We did not have any issues with anything. 
Um, I have talked to some of our different friends after we've had this damage and they are all shocked and appalled. I've had heard of other people who've had some damage, but it's been more like I mentioned earlier, perhaps there was a puncture to the side of the crate, but uh, nothing was damaged or it was minor damage and they were able to get replaced really easily. This definitely is not the norm. I would really, I would go out and say that this is not the norm. Don't freak out, please, thinking that this is what it's always like or this is what's going to happen to you. That being said, a couple things that I think are good to know now that I've been through this that I want to make sure that you guys kind of contemplate if you are getting one of your kids delivered. The first is videotape it. I think we are really, really lucky that I happen to be filming everything um, because now it's documented exactly how the crate looked when it came off, exactly what the truck driver said to me as it was coming off. Um, it's documented that he tried to tell me that I could not refuse delivery. Uh, it's documented that it did get dropped a little bit when he was trying to put it onto the lift gate. Anything like that, it's all there in film. And um, I think that's really helpful because it's pretty hard to disprove, it's pretty hard to try and argue um, about exactly how it happened when you've got it on film and exactly the way it was delivered. And again, the part where he tried to tell me I couldn't refuse it. So that if they were to tell me I needed to refuse it then, I could point out, it's like, your guy told me I couldn't. Um, touching on that, you, you do have the right to refuse it. I did talk to Vans. I talked also to the manager there uh, on his cell phone about this. He was very upset to hear uh, that that's what we were told. He said he will be addressing it with the driver. And I believe one of the people I spoke with said, I think you have five days where you could refuse delivery. But the big thing, the caveat to that seemed to be that you could not open the crate. So that's the next thing, I guess, besides just filming it. If there's damage, don't, I would not open the crate. Um, that was something we were very fortunate with that we didn't just start going into it to try and look at the damage that we called vans first because since it was still in the crate, we were able to, uh, to have it where they could still come and pick it up and say, no, we're refusing delivery. You need to come pick it up. This is how you delivered it. This is how you need to pick it up. And so if you have damage, I would wait until you contact vans and wait until you contact the shipper and figure out what the situation is because the lady who came out to do the inspection, she even mentioned that if there is no, uh, if the packaging isn't there and she just were to come out and just see damaged parts, she said, I can document that these parts are damaged, but I have no way to prove that the damage happened during shipping or the damage was done to the crate around the area where the package, the item in the package was. So, you know, she even stressed that, yes, if you have any damage, leave it alone because if she or somebody like her, a third party uh, inspector needs to come out to document the damage, they really need to see the condition of the crate when it arrived so that they can then try to say, yes, this correlates where this damage was and where the item was in here. It, it, it matches up that yes, this clearly was caused by the damage that was done to the crate. So, um, yeah, so long story short, thank you Vans for really trying to help fix this. Looking forward to hearing um, what happens from here. I'm hoping that we get the M kit sooner rather than later, just so it doesn't cause any sort of a delay with our build. Um, ABF, again, I really think communication is the biggest thing I'm really frustrated, <laughs> besides the obvious, which is that my box my crate got like destroyed. I'm gonna put up some pictures and everything to just show you the extent of the damage that was done. It's not just like the puncture hole on the top. There was damage even done to the bottom because you can see uh, that if you were to look at the bottom there, you can actually see where it warps along the bottom. There is this undulating curvature to it. You can see where on the side where the most damage was, it's actually broken down there. Uh, so this was, this was, this was extensive damage to the point that we were able to look in the crate and you can see that the steel firewall was bent, uh, in a couple different places. So this wasn't just like a teensy bit of damage, this bent steel. So, um, I wish they'd handled it a little bit more 
rapidly, better communication, wish I'd been notified beforehand, wish it had been expedited without me having to complain about it. Uh, yeah, and just wish basically it just hadn't happened. I, I still, I don't know what was done to this, but it was just huge damage, so. And yeah, the things I guess to take away from this are, one, don't think this is the norm. It's really, I really would, would swear it's not. Um, again, we had zero problems with our other deliveries and I don't think I've heard of anybody else really having quite this severe of damage. I mean, again, normally little bits of damage, sure, I've heard about that, but um, yeah, just crazy. But film everything just for your own safety, I would say, and your own peace of mind. What's the harm? Get out your phone, get out, you know, a GoPro, get out a camera. Just set it up. You can either stand there like I did and just film it by hand. You could put a tripod out, but I would just film it so you have it in case anything happens. And, you know, better safe than sorry. And uh, don't open it if there's damage. Wait until you have contacted Vans and the shipper and see how everyone wants to progress with everything. Because if it does come down to having an inspector come out, you want to make sure that they can see the state of the crate themselves um, and document any damage that they need to to help with the claim. So that's where it is. Disappointed. Oh, some of you had asked about like staying cool. Yeah, I did. I did try to stay cool yesterday just because, um, I mean, it wasn't the driver's fault per se. What I mean by that is it's not like he did all of this damage by himself. This was clearly something that was done earlier because there was clearly an attempt to cover it up with that big board that had been strapped down to the top. And he'd actually told us that at some point somebody had tried to strap a board onto the side to cover up the huge hole there. Uh, so, I mean, this wasn't like he did it. So that's why I was kind of trying to stay calm. And honestly, I was pretty shocked. So this was just not at all what I was anticipating. And the further out it came and the more we saw the damage, it was just like more and more appalling. So, but, you know, just going to press forward and see where it goes from here. And thank you again, Barb over there for being so kind and helpful. And I will update you as we get more information on where we stand with everything. So thanks again for all of your concern. And hopefully this doesn't happen to any of you. So, but if it does, at least hopefully this video will help a little bit to tell you what we had to go through and to help make your life a little bit easier if this should happen. But take care and I will keep you posted whenever we get more information.